If you do that, I'll win in six moves. If you do that, I'll win in four. Three. <sighs> Darling, what is it with all this stress? It's throwing off your game. You really must learn to relax. I'll add that to the list of things I need to do. No, oh, excellent idea, darling. Actually, where is this list? There's a few things I would like to add. There is no list. I was just being sarcastic. Darling, what is bothering you? You're about as much fun as sand in my underpants. Sorry, there's just been so much going on. I haven't been able to work on furniture for a while. I've got a huge pile of it building up out there and I'm worried we're gonna attract more junk demons. You're feeling overwhelmed. Yes. So why not pick out a nice relaxing furniture project? Yeah. One that evokes beachy vacation vibes. You just said the word vibes. Picture it. You're strolling on a beach, darling. Right. Your clothes are 100% linen. Of course. The wind blows your hair. Mm-hmm. You stare out at the sea. Yeah, sea staring. You're contemplative. I think it's contemplative. Shh. You think about your life, all the people you've known. This is getting dramatic. You wonder about that time in France. Which time in France? Does he still think of you? He? Wait, wait, me or you? Does he forgive you for stealing that painting from the Louvre and framing him for it? What? Setting off a decades-long manhunt that resulted in his arrest and conviction. And all the while, it was you, darling, it was you. And you still have that very masterpiece hanging on the walls of your sweet and simple beach cottage. <gasps> or, you know, something like that. Right. Ah. <sighs> uh. I think I'll go and pick something out to work on. Yes, darling. You go on. Okay. Oh, darling. Yes. Checkmate. Hi everyone, I'm Andy. Welcome to Furniture Fables. Ah, uh, May. I always forget, it's sort of like a mini December. So busy. And at this time of year, this Furniture Fabler finds herself longing for an extended vacation, far away from the worries and concerns of color choice and customized glass shelves. <clears throat> Luckily for her, there is currently an abundance of pieces ideally suited for a relaxing and neutral makeover with a bit of a strategic twist. This leggy little side table I picked up for free from some very nice young fellows who I think were moving out of a college apartment. It was certainly a bit worse for wear. The top was covered in marks and the finish was peeling off over really the entire piece. It also seemed to have several bite marks where the wood had been crunched somehow, but I was not surprised to see that it also had a respected maker's mark. It was most likely from the 60s or 70s, and it was made by Haywood Wakefield. Its style was the traditional colonial style, very popular during that time, and it sported a typically florid 
brass pull, but other than its cosmetic issues, it was in great shape. I started cleaning the table using some warm water and some Dawn dishwashing soap. And as I scrubbed, I soon discovered that this was an extremely dirty piece. A thick sort of sludge began to form as I scrubbed. And after I had loosened it, I was very happy to use the hose and give this piece a thorough rinsing. I brought the little table into the garage and then this became all about the sanding. I knew I wanted to do an all over paint wash and really lean into that beautiful natural modern feel. And so using my three by four sander and a medium grit foam abrasive, I removed all the old finish and stain as well as all of the major scratches and dings. I decided not to worry too much about those more prominent crunched edges you can see there. I sanded them smooth but left them still somewhat visible. That's the nice thing about this look. It really lends itself so well to a table like this one that has imperfections like these. They actually end up becoming part of the beauty of the piece. You can see that just by sanding, the wood is looking refreshed. It's lighter and that orangey undertone is starting to recede. After I removed everything that I wanted to remove with the medium grit, I switched over to a fine grit and gave the entire table a nice finishing sand until it felt nice and smooth all over. All right, it was time for me to choose a paint to make the wash with, and so to help myself along, I pulled a couple of decor pieces. This big conch shell, I was thinking I'd like to actually pull the table up into one of those lighter shades on the shell, as well as a little hit of blue and white. And then I got out two very different neutrals. You can see that this one here on the right is a true khaki. It's cooler and has more kind of gray and even green undertones, while the one on the left is more golden and sandy, which makes sense as its name is Sandcastle. With how it was working with this wood's natural tone, I thought it was definitely the way to go. I made a one part water to one part paint wash forgetting to take my brush out, oops. And then I gave the top a good spray of water, wiped back the excess, and then began applying my wash.
I let that sit for about 30 seconds and then I wiped it back using my lint-free cloths. I let it dry just for a couple of minutes and then I decided to apply a second coat. Now I am using an all-in-one paint, which means the paint contains some primer and some top coat. And you can absolutely do that. You can create paint washes with all-in-ones. But just remember that with that added primer and top coat, this paint will really want to stay put and set up much more quickly than just a basic chalk paint. If you find little areas like this one here where the paint looks kind of uneven and you don't really like that, if you get in quick, you can rub it back with just some water on a rag, but if it sits for more than a minute or so, you'll most likely need to sand to do any blending. Okay, I took a look at the top with that shell and I really liked what I was seeing, so I was off to the races, applying the wash to the entire table. Here's the table in the bright sunlight with its drawer pre-wash and you can see how the wash as sandy as it is has still mellowed out the more bright and orangey tones in the wood. We are still seeing that gorgeous wood grain and the wood still reads as warm but it's a softer and more weathered appearance. I applied the wash to the drawer front twice and then I got my rad pad and electric ray sander out again and began a little bit of sand blending. With a piece like this one with all of these turned legs and levels, you are bound to have some spots that are kind of blotchy. And so I used my sander almost like a blending sponge to feather out those areas. And we're blending and we're blending, and we're turning, and we're blending, <laughs> and we're blending some more. Then I came back in with a cloth and I just dabbed on a little bit more of that paint wash wherever it was needed. Now, if someone wanted a simple, basic, modern, beachy refresh, well, we're pretty much there. But I had another idea I wanted to try with this little table. The proportions of its almost square top, as well as its relaxed and earthy vibe, made me think of peaceful days away from screens. Days of long walks, fresh air, reading a good book and playing games. You know, games with cards or pieces that you move with your hands. 
And so I decided this little table needed a chessboard top. Now, you can absolutely find chessboard patterned stencils, but if you don't want to make that extra purchase, here is how to do it with painter's tape. I measured the dimensions of a chessboard square. The one I had was close to about an inch and three quarters. And then I marked the edges of the top with that measurement, making sure that I would have enough room for eight rows of eight squares. Then I began taping that off. You can see that I need to use two pieces of painter's tape to achieve the correct width. I did the same thing on both sides, making sure to allow for a bit more border on that longer side, and then did the same taping off technique. Now, you may be thinking, but Andy, this is not what a chessboard looks like. It has diagonal rows of same squares, whereas you have clearly created just sort of a basic check. Well, fear not, my friends, this is just the first step. I used the full strength sandcastle paint to paint in those exposed squares, letting that first coat dry and then coming back in and doing a second coat. Then I got to remove all of that tape and I began my second taping job. Using the existing squares now as the taping guides, I used that same taping technique, but this time leaving exposed the squares that would be the connecting diagonal squares. I gave those squares two coats of sandcastle as well, and then removed the tape to reveal my chessboard. And there it is. It's just very pleasing to the eye, isn't it? <laughs> I wasn't sure yet about which handle I wanted to use for that drawer, but I did kind of really want to see what this natural wood pool would look like. So I gave it the same paint wash as the table and let that dry. Then I came back to the chessboard and using a fine grit rad pad, I gently sanded down the edges of those squares. And then I gave the entire top a light, gentle sanding. Then I went ahead and installed that wood pull, giving it a good sanding and making sure that it felt very smooth to the touch. And then I did the same for the rest of the table, knocking off any little raised bits that had come up after the paint wash.
I decided to use Dixie Belle's gator hide to seal the tabletop. Gator hide is a tough top coat, great for tabletops. And I think it will be really great for this potentially game <laughs> tabletop. I actually sprayed my brush with some water before I began. And then I began to carefully lay down that first coat, making sure to connect my edges and resisting that urge to go back over any of the top coat that I had already laid down. Once that had dried, I did a second coat on the top, and then I added a coat all over the entire piece. You know, if I were keeping this little table for myself, I might not even seal the body with such a rustic finish, but because I'm planning to sell it, I really feel like um, the right thing to do is to seal it off. I used a little mini brush to top coat the wooden handle, and then I gave the drawer front a coat of gator hide as well. And it's all right. The next day, I did a second coat on the table, but this time I used a flat top coat on those legs. Gator hide does dry a bit glossy, and while its sheen wasn't bothering me at all on the horizontal surfaces, I found that it was more noticeable on those turned legs. Okay, then I decided I really wanted to add a little whimsy to this little drawer. I gave it a good sanding and then I chose a stencil for the bottom. I trimmed up two chip brushes and then I got out this beautiful dark blue, appropriately named Deep Sea, as well as my sandcastle paint. I gave them both good stirs with some wood sticks, and then I just used the paint that was on those sticks to apply to my chip brushes and stenciled in this pattern. One side sandcastle and one side deep sea. My idea here was to create a sort of landing pad for taken chess pieces. I'll show you what I mean at the end. And then for those sides, I thought they needed a little touch of beachy romance. This sketched blue rose rice paper by Dixie Belle seemed like just the ticket. I trimmed up the paper and then used some gator hide as my glue. Then I used a medium fine rad pad to sand off the extra paper. When you do this, you want to only sand in one direction, away from your wet top coat. Once that was done, I gave my stencil a sanding and then I decided to try something new for me. Using a fine foam abrasive, I tried out sanding back some of the rice paper. In its fresh application, it looked a bit too new for me. I was actually really unsure if I would like this and so I went into this fully expecting that I might need to redo the drawer side completely. But I have to say, I kind of found myself loving this effect. And so I did the same thing on the other side and decided to sit with it for a bit. The interior of the drawer was a bit warm for me still, so I gave it a quick hit uh, with some liming wax 
to mellow out that warmth and also seal up the paint. Okay, do you remember our college kid cast off? With its grungy and grimy and even gouged groove? Dated and dinged and lacking any kind of play? Well, here she is now. Wow, meet me at the beach, friends. I'll bring the umbrellas and the chairs. You bring the s'mores and the surfboards. <laughs> oh, this palette, it always amazes me. It is just so relaxed and yet also sophisticated all at once. Happy to hang with just about any other accent color or just tell the story of surf and sky. And in a world where technology is constantly demanding our attention, the soft and subtle chessboard invites us in to sit down with a friend and enjoy a good game of timeless strategy. And where do those fallen pieces land? Right into the drawer with its clearly stenciled sides. And when our queen achieves her checkmate, the players can be good-naturedly returned to their drawer to await their next friendly battle. Oh, and if you'd like just a little bit more romance and sparkle, well, behold the power of the pull, my friends. Just like that, our coastal beauty can be dressed up with the turn of a screw bringing that dark blue and sparkling white to the face of our drawer gives the table a new, slightly more zhuzhed up feel. And I can honestly say, I don't know which one I prefer. Either way, I love how this little table says, put down your worries, forget about those emails, and instead of streaming a drama, let's play a game. Just you and me. relaxing little beach baby cost me? Well, the table of course was free. I used about $5 worth of paint that I already had on hand from another project. That packet of rice paper from Dixie Bell runs about $13 and I used about $5 worth of that. The wood handle was $3.50. The ceramic one was $8.50. So I'll just factor in $5 right now for a pull and add in another $10 for sand abrasives, top coat, liming wax, etc. And that brings my total out of pocket cost to $25. So what will I list it for? Well, all in the table took me just under six hours. Certainly adding that pattern top and that drawer detail were what added in that extra amount of time. If I were to try and pay myself $50 an hour, I would be listing this little table at $325. Sadly, I do not think I could sell it for that. And here's really where the rub comes in when you choose to do a table like this. It can be difficult to get a good return on your work. I also have no idea how this coastal grandma meets the queen's gambit will do in my area. Maybe folks will love it. Maybe it will be more of a sleepy listing. So I've decided to go ahead and list the table at $195 and consider this piece somewhat of a market test case. We'll see how she does. I hope you enjoyed this relaxing little makeover. If so, please give me a thumbs up and let me know which did you prefer, the wooden pull or the ceramic one? And which are you, a chess player 
or a checkers person. Neither, cards maybe? And make sure to click that subscribe button before you go as well if you like follow-ups because I will post you a little message to let you know how this table does on the market. Thank you so much for joining me, my friends. I'll see you next time for more Furniture Fables.